Good afternoon and welcome to the Liverpool Echoes coverage ahead of kickoff for the Carabao Cup final across our digital platforms, including the Blood Red YouTube channel. Myself, Guy Clark and Theo Squires, part of our reporting team. He's live at Wembley, soaking up all of the build-up as Liverpool go in hunt of their ninth League Cup triumph. And Theo, I'll, I'll come straight over to you for I suppose your journey down the preparations that you've seen so far and kind of the buzz that's beginning to build at Wembley. Yeah, the fans are already starting coming into Wembley here and you can just see the happiness, the excitement. Like Liverpool haven't been at Wembley for a final since 2016. They haven't won a, what, a domestic final since 2012. At Wembley used to be Anfield South and those days have been starved in recent years. Liverpool have been champions of the world, they've been champions of Europe, they've been champions of England. They need that domestic glory. And you can tell that the fans, they're full of excitement coming to this. Like they're coming to the stadium now, an hour and a half, two hours before kickoff, getting their pictures, all full of smiles, plenty of flags, plenty of banners. It was the same in the fan zone, um, but it was rammed in there. Like you compare it to the Chelsea one, that, there was barely anyone in that. Guaranteed it's a close day for them, isn't it? They don't have to go too far to have a drink and come and enjoy this one. But Liverpool fans, they're, they're in party mode. They're enjoying it. Plenty came down yesterday on the train of oh, getting coaches down and enjoyed their night in London. Obviously, John Henry and Linda Pizzuti, they were out in London last night, taking in the atmosphere and making the most of this final weekend. Now, we're saying that these sorts of uh, day, day, days out have been rare for Liverpool. Hopefully this is going to be the first of many. Like They're on course for a quadruple. It's still early days, but if this is the first leg, then they could be going to Wembley again in April for an FA Cup semi-final. Again in May for a final. Like, this is what Liverpool want to be doing. They want to be challenging for every single honour. And fair play to the fans here. They've all come in. They're all enjoying the day out. And they're hoping that this is the first of many successes. Yeah, most certainly. Get more from you shortly as well, Theo. But we can kind of see Matt Addison, our Liverpool.com editor, also at Wembley today, soaking up the atmosphere. He's going to be in with the supporters and is at Wembley at the minute. And obviously there you can kind of see the uh, the scenes that are outside of Wembley, the Liverpool fan park nearby to there as well. And as you said, Theo, the atmosphere really building plenty of reds in and around Anfield South really building up and looking forward to this game, taking on Chelsea, of course, and looking to get one over on Thomas Tuchel for the first time since he took over at Chelsea. Of course, Chelsea have been to a Wembley Cup final under him, were beaten by Leicester City in last year's FA Cup. Could that prove to be a good omen for the Reds? Well, Theo, before as well, we've seen the, uh, the footage there from Matt as well, talking about the supporters and the, uh, the Liverpool Echo have been catching up with Liverpool fans ahead of the game. And here's some of them with their thoughts on the, just their journey, but also what they think might happen this afternoon. So we're live on the Liverpool Echo here. Where are we come from, fellas? Well, from the Isle of Man. From the Isle of Man. Yeah. When did you come down? Uh, we drove down about an hour ago. Fantastic. From Liverpool. We started off in Liverpool at half seven this morning. Oh, so that's a bit of a long trip for you yeah. down then. Absolutely amazing. What are you making of the atmosphere so far? So, so, so far, so good. It's really good. Loads of people around and nice friendly atmosphere so far. Yeah. No, absolutely right. What are your kind of predictions for the game today then? Liverpool obviously coming off the back of an amazing win midweek. Form looking really good. What are we thinking? Probably 3-0, 3-1, three three something like that. Let's hope for 3-0 and keep a clean sheet. Oh, absolutely. And obviously the uh, the form Liverpool are in at, are in at the moment. We're uh, fighting on all four fronts at the moment with the FA Cup, Champions League and Premiership still to come as well. What are you thinking kind of come end of season in terms of where Liverpool can finish up? I think they've just got to take each game as it goes. You know, worry about what's in front of them rather than what's too, too far down the line. And uh, fingers crossed we'll, we'll, we'll bring plenty of trophies home. Well, Theo there, kind of hearing from the supporters. It, and it does feel as though kind of, I don't know, the, the confidence is built as well as cup final days got closer. The League Cup often derided. But hearing their sort of 3 nil predictions against the Chelsea team, who are often very tight and very cagey, but Liverpool fans right up for this one. Yeah, that was an ambitious shout, wasn't it? 3 nil. <laughs> Be loving that if that came in. I think we were talking in the, when we were queuing to get in at the media area. And we were thinking extra time penalties because as good as Liverpool have been in recent weeks scoring goals for fun and Chelsea haven't been at their best, they're still one of the best defensive sides in the country. And we have seen that when Liverpool faced them um, this season. Like Liverpool played 10 men at Anfield for a half and they couldn't break them down. They got the, the one all draw. It was a, a two-all draw at Stamford Bridge when they threw away that 2-0 lead. That was a really good game. 
Uh, hopefully we're getting another good game here. But Liverpool are fans have a right to be confident. Like they've only lost twice this season. They haven't lost in 2022. They've won, was it, all nine of the last nine games. Uh, I'm beating in 12. If you go back the calendar year, go, go, to, go back to 12 months, they've only lost five times. And two of them were in the first week of March when they were losing basically every week. One of them was obviously against uh, Chelsea at Anfield. But then they turned it around. Jurgen Klopp found a way to get Liverpool back to their best. Last year was just seventh yet in the top four, and now this is real Liverpool again, competing for these honours. Of course the fans are going to be confident. That's what you've done. If you're going into this game off the back of a 6 0 win against Leeds United, to narrow the gap on Manchester City, when two months ago the title race looked done and dusted, you've got one foot in the Champions League quarterfinals. There is no reason not to be confident. It's when you then look at Chelsea and think they might not be in the best place. They have all those stories behind the scenes and away from the football pitch that's dominating their preparations. But they're still a very good side. They're the European champions. They're the world champions. Thomas Tuchel has completely transformed them compared to what they were competing for under Frank Lambert. He has taken them to that next level. They have got some serial winners on that side and they are very hard to break down. It is going to be a case of which one of these two sides is at their best. The Liverpool can start explosively, but then that's what you expect when you see Mohamed Salah, Sadio Mane, Luis Diaz, whoever it is. And then we know Diogo Jota is hopefully going to be fit enough to be involved. But yeah, just enjoy the day out. Hopefully Liverpool can live up to the occasion. I think finals so far under Jurgen Klopp, they haven't really, if we're being honest. Like the Kiev, yeah, it wasn't the best one against Real Madrid. Tottenham, whilst we won the European Cup. Uh, we don't remember much from that game apart from the two goals. FIFA Club World Cup, it went to extra time, wasn't the best final. European Super Cup, there was drama, there were great goals against Chelsea, of course, but it was penalties. So, Liverpool don't do it the easy way. They never have. Rare for them to actually get an off chance, they do do it comfortably. It's going to be a tight game. Um, hopefully, they're on the winning side come the end of it. But yeah, we enjoy the ride, don't we? That's what Liverpool fans are in the business for. All the highs, the lows, the sing the songs for him to sing, the dreams, all the tales. It's about bringing these stories on. Like this is what Liverpool's 13th, 14th League Cup final. The first one they lost to Nottingham Forest in the 70s, and they went on that mad run, winning four in a row. You, you listen to the older fans talking to those great teams of Dalglish, Souness, Hansen. This is Liverpool's new history now, creating these tales in front of your very eyes with your Van Dykes, your Fabinho's, your Edisons, your Salas. These are the stories for the next generation of fans. When they are as good a team as they are, fans are going to be confident. And hopefully this is going to be another successful chance to write into the book today. Yeah, most definitely. Norwich, Preston North End, Leicester City and Arsenal all seen off. And, and certainly the last two rounds, quarterfinal and the semi-final, Liverpool really showing what they are made of to obviously see off Leicester on penalties at Anfield, but with Arsenal as well being held to a goal of drawing the first leg of the semi-final and then second half, albeit away from home, really just swatting the opponent aside with relative ease. Theo, we'll check in with some early team news soon, but before that, let's bring your footage now of the Liverpool bus making its way into Wembley just moments ago. Well, you can see there the flares, you can hear the songs, you can hear other reporters doing their pieces to cameras and whatnot, seeing the uh, bus go into the stadium. It's always an occasion, certainly for the Liverpool fans, to really lap up and enjoy. So, Theo, we've seen the bus there, the big team news line, though, and before the team news is going to be out, is is Diogo Jota going to be involved today? Um, I think he's going to be on the bench, but can't start like it's too much of a gamble Liverpool have done these gambles in the past with finals when they've not had that depth 
they've had to rush players back from injury, whether it was starting Roberto Firmino in the Champions League final in 2019, or having like the Alanas and the Emre Chans on the bench when they've not played for two months. Liverpool have been in that situation too often, had to turn to those players, and it's been a gamble that's backfired. Today, they don't have to make that gamble. Ideally, Liverpool get the job done, and they don't even need to turn to Jota. You can leave them as an unused substitute. Maybe he's enough to bring on an extra time or bring on for a penalty shootout. He's got enough in his legs for that. But you, you don't know how he's suffering. And then at the same time, it could be my games from Jurgen Klopp. He could be absolutely fine and they're just keeping the cards close to the chest. You don't know. But we've said enough from Salah, Mane, Diaz for that to be a starting front three in a final today. You've got those quality options there and you've still got Origi. You've still got Minamino who have loved this competition so far this season. And Origi, we know how much he loves the big occasions. Liverpool have those options. It doesn't make sense to make that gamble. I know Chelsea, they might make a gamble with Reese James. He's been back from injury. I think he's a touch and go whether he can reach it today. But they don't have that depth, so they might have to throw him in. Liverpool have got the depth, so they don't need to be in that situation. When you've got Jota, have him on the bench. He's there as a backup if you need him. Hopefully they don't. Hopefully they get it done without him. They have got enough quality to do it. Let's see. We'll find out uh, in three minutes. Yeah, the team news will be out very shortly. Indeed, the big guns, Ian Doyle and Paul Gorse, they're making their way into their seats in the press box. Theo, enjoy the action and enjoy the occasion reporting on the Reds at Wembley. As I say, team news out shortly. Head across to the Liverpool Echo website for all the coverage throughout the day. And of course, here on the Blood Red YouTube channel as well, we will bring you plenty as well, including Jurgen Klopp's post-match thoughts after the game. But let's wait and see if the Reds will indeed lift number nine in the League Cup from myself, Guy Clark, and Theo Squires at Wembley. Thanks for joining us for us build-up. It's bye for now.